Yeah, thank you. Uh, my presentation is a, a bit of an outlier if you consider these uh, presentations that we have heard so far. So uh, we are actually uh, developing some diagnostics for a maintenance application. And uh, from my perspective, most of the presentations here have been about the infrastructure, how we can deploy our tools. So basically, who knows how, uh, whether our, our techniques and uh, our software would someday be running on your software, or maybe we could have a, a common project where we could be uh, just uh, a case for you. But anyway, uh, we are talking about punching tools. And punching is one of the metal processing techniques. So if you have a metal chassis or some, some other things, like you have in your laptops, and there are holes, there are various holes for keyboards and displays and connectors and things like that. So most probably they are punched. It's much faster than drilling and it also allows different shapes and sizes. Okay, and when we talk about, um, oops, <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, uh, this uh, estimation of where we are really talking about maintenance. And there are various types of maintenance. There are many things that are not uh, repaired or fixed or replaced until they break down. But there are also other types of maintenance. So like, for example, you have your cars and they are uh, serviced up to so and so many kilometers. But when you want to optimize things, you have to use data to get the idea of what the actual condition is of the maintained thing. And then we are talking about condition-based maintenance. And this is something that uh, we are doing. And uh, it's an optimization task. So if you uh, make uh, two frequent services, that means that you are wasting resources and wasting production time. Then if you are doing maintenance too rarely, that means that there will be quality problems and unplanned outages and Again, you are wasting resources. The pixel, uh, sorry, just the previous one. Uh, the uh, pixel on the right hand side is uh, just a reminder. It is from one ISO standard. So it's a reminder that this maintenance is actually a well established, significant field of industry. So that there are plenty of standards, but how we implement, like this is a data processing chain, so how we do the internals, then that is up to us. Okay, and now uh, getting to the uh, actual punching. So punching is a part of a processing line so that there are metal sheets taken in, they are uh, holes are punched, then there are some cutting, some bending and, and things like that. Uh, the picture you see on the right hand side is uh, is actually inside from a uh, punching machine and each of those round things is a cassette containing punching tools of various shapes and sizes so that they are taken uh, into use one at a time from those those cassettes now uh the Tools itself, themselves, they consist of uh, two different parts so that there is a corresponding parts on both sides, on either side of the, of the metal sheet that is being punched. So that's something that hits and something that uh, gives support so that the punch is pretty clean. And if you consider the thing that we have measured, it's uh, uh, 20 kilohertz uh, vibration acceleration, and we want to output just one uh, number per punch. And so plenty of data in, little out, and if that doesn't spell edge, then I don't really know what will. Okay, then uh, just to show you what these examples are, we, have, we are really in uh, very early stages of, uh, of this work. And there are some signatures that uh, are plotted across the, uh, on top of each other, so it doesn't really uh, show up very clearly. But there are things like uh, or different colors for uh, sharp and worn punch tools, and also two different 
types of stainless steel that, that is being, being punched. Okay, so when we do this uh, data processing, then uh, we actually need uh, both accuracy and computational speed. Because uh, speed uh, is needed because uh, when you go to a punching machine and it's operating, you hear something that resembles a machine gun so that, uh, so that it actually uh, gives quite a lot of punches per, uh, per second. And then uh, uh, there can be uh, this analysis functionality that needs to be done on site. And speaking of uh, of the speed, the, we saw that our selection for, uh, was uh, fast enough for running on something like a Raspberry Pi. But actually, I, I feel a uh, sting in my conscience now because on, in the morning there was a lot of discussion about energy efficiency. So you are optimizing the energy efficiency of the infrastructure and we are running the Python scientific stack on top of that. So, so that is not, not the most sensitive. Well, when we started this thing, then uh, we, of course, took a look at, look at literature, so what other people had been doing. And we found some similar applications reported where they had used a uh, time series feature extraction library. And we tried that, but we were not too happy uh, about the performance. So I'll be showing that in, in a minute. Uh, and then we discovered another open source tool, Mini Rocket, which uh, actually takes quite a lot of uh, features from time series samples in practically the same time. And then keeping things simple, we used logistic regression to, to actually estimate the state of the, of the uh, wear. And now uh, we have these two open source libraries and on the le left you see the uh, feature extraction library giving a confusion matrix that is not too diagonal. So we were not too happy with that and kept on looking and trying. And, and with this mini rocket, we get a, a pretty good uh, diagonality for the confusion matrix, even for single punches. So these are single punches. And in a real application that we are aiming for, then uh, we can uh, concatenate these results and use some kind of filtering to improve the reliability, but this looks good enough. Okay, then uh, if you are thinking something like me, uh, then when you hear 10,000 features extracted, then you are immediately thinking about, what about overfitting? And that is, that is what we, uh, we were too uh, thinking. And actually uh, we made trials, so uh, selecting these features from the mini rocket library and actually uh, we got some almost as good results as with the full set with only 10 features so so that seems much more reasonable there is no difference in uh, in actually execution speed with that but but anyway uh, uh, we are happy to be in uh, lesser danger of overfitting Okay, then um, now uh, I have been talking about edge and since this is the edge to cloud continuum, this conference, then I, you may be wondering already where the cloud is and we are actually not that far yet. But uh, what we are aiming to is aiming at is to support two level of industrial decision making. And then uh, uh, we have a fast cycle, so to give immediate feedback of the tool state to the machine operator. So to uh, give him indication when to change and sharpen the tool. And uh, these uh, machines are quite often run so that there is somebody there uh, during daytime and then uh, 16 hours a day there is nobody there. And that means that we have to uh, have some nice indication beforehand when the wear is not too bad. And 
so to help uh, avoid production losses during night. But then uh, we go to the cloud analytics where we aim for a longer term decision making, especially supporting planning. So keeping uh, benchmarking statistics like uh, how different materials and designs work out. So, so what is the thing uh, that we should uh, perhaps design differently or what are the products that we should be avoiding or, or something like that. But also uh, this goes the other way around from cloud so that, so that uh, there are of course modeling issues and we, uh, we can add some additional features and then uh, what we aim to also is to feed back configuration updates from the cloud to the edge. So uh, this is the state of the thing and actually uh, the main author of this paper as you may see uh, the first name is, is my colleague Jukka Juntila who couldn't join us today due to a family event. So uh, but anyway, thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for giving us an excellent use case. This is very interesting. I have seen a lot of industrial settings utilizing either the private clouds or private edges mm -hmm. uh, on, on providing something because things pretty much stay in, in, in your facility. So do you see any uh, against the private private edge things here i mean like do you need the information from the facility going out for example for the third party maintenance company or or, or something yeah that is uh something that we have also come across so that uh so that if there is uh anything like a real time connection to the from the cloud to the to the uh actual meal operations then of course they want to keep it local to avoid any problems but in this particular case there is this manufacturer of the punching machines who also does maintenance and uh, and uh, they can do a lot of benchmarking and helping people out. Uh, can you see, in in addition to maintenance, also uh, could they analyze like a punching power or or developing better punching machines based on the data analytics? Uh, that is a future possibility. Uh, we are not there yet <laughs> with this this particular application. Yeah. We are there in in some other applications like uh, in the pulp and paper domain. Cool. Thank you for the presentation. I'm not. Uh, it's it's not perfectly clear to me whether I have understood the notion of features in your case in your mm -hmm. context. What yeah. can you provide some examples of features, especially with respect to the uh, uh, time series approach? Yes, these are uh, actually uh, uh, I would say black box features, so that they are uh, statistical features that are computed and uh, and this time series. Uh, feature extraction library, then that uses, uh, first of all, uh, some time domain, like starting from uh, very simple things like uh, variance to who knows how, uh, what else, or uh, rates of changes and, and things like that, and moving windows, uh, also in, in frequency domain. But this uh, mini rocket is, uh, is doing a bit of a different approach so that it has a set of uh, pre-configured kernels so that it does uh, some kind of uh, transformation for the signal with predetermined kernels so you get a, a number of uh, uh, different modified signals and then from those you extract eigenvalues and see okay. how many they are positive or, or so, something like that. So all of the futures are related to the signal itself. They, yes. They, do, they are not related to other factors of the manufacturing process. Uh, no, the, uh, actually the uh, thing that, that we are uh, actually currently using, but, uh, but not really included in this presentation yet, is that we are also, of course, uh, including things like what kind of metal, what kind of tool, things like that, so. Okay, thank you, thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Um, 
you said that there is this uh, interplay between the seller of the uh, punch machine mm -hmm. that sometimes does maintenance. Yes. I have seen other cases, I think, for um, uh, shop floor vehicles mm -hmm. where the vendor was uh, adopting a business model like a leasing and you would pay more or less depending on how roughly you were dealing with your, for example, mm -hmm. forklift. Is there some idea to apply this so that, you know, also maybe the maintenance contract could uh, benefit more or less from, let's say, the, the you know, how, mm -hmm. how is... damaged, how, 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 how hard work is, is given to the, to the punchy machine? Yeah, that is a definite possibility, but I'm not really into the uh, into the knowledge of the business relations between these two companies. Thank you. I have some question also. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have a quite a small data set for for training for training and verification. Have mm -hmm. you considered uh, making some data augmentation or or I don't know if you have some kind of simulator mechanical simulator or something like that? Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, we have made that, and we are using. So we are uh, we have a, a very recently implemented a finite element method based simulator for for uh, this kind of phenomenon. Okay, perfect. That's it. Yeah. And another thing, you 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 think uh, it could be possible to port this uh, this modeless application mm -hmm. to, for example, C in order to be implemented in a even in the in the in the in the accelerometer could be implemented. Uh, that is a possibility that we haven't yet considered actually, but but it is it is quite possible, yeah, and uh, and uh, something that we should be looking once we get everything at first uh, working on on Python and okay. and deploying it in C. Mm -hmm. 